Right, welcome to this video on restoring our motorcycle gauges. You can see I finished this one just today and this one is yet to be tackled. That's the speedometer obviously and it's the operation seems all right but there are a few things inside we need to check as well as taking them apart, painting them, putting new faces on, all this sort of stuff. We've even gone to the extent of painting the end of the speedo ne needle there to um, give it a better aesthetic look. So First thing we'll do, I suppose, is look at some of the tools it's going to require uh, to do this job. Probably a bit overkill with some of these tools, but these are the ones that I use to do the tack. Um, starting with a... Um, it doesn't look good when you begin with a hammer, but I use that and a small bit of dowel to start putting the ring back on. A um, bit of rubber grease to put around the seal. We've got a couple of different grits of wet and dry. We've got 400 and 2000 set of 99 cent multi grips with the teeth shaved off or filed off there's a bit of fabric tape over the top there we've got various screwdrivers Phillips head little flat blade driver small Phillips head driver there we've got the speedo needle paint a can opener those yeah didn't really do, use those much a jubilee clip a couple of teaspoons razor blade a very small paintbrush a bit of cardboard and a couple of um, tools that I made up so there's this one here for putting the shell of the Speedo on to give it a paint job. There's this one here which holds it and it's fluff lined with some fabric electrical tape. You don't need to go to those lengths, that's just off cuts of rubbish. And a small jig for mounting the faceplate on, or the overlay onto the original faceplate. So I think that's about it. If I think of anything else, I'll tell you. There was, oh yeah, prep wash, a little bit of use, a bit of this stuff, a bit of window cleaner for the lens, and that's about it, I think. Right, so I've got the speedo here. Now, these things can be horrendously difficult to get off, and I ended up using a heat gun. Um, they do rust there. I didn't have any trouble getting that little grub screw out, but they do hold on to that um, square drive, or index drive very very well so i just heat it up gingerly with a heat gun you've got to be careful when you're doing that sort of thing though that you don't damage the rubber you don't overheat it you're only getting it a bit warm and it'll pull straight off so if i put that in unscrew it change my glasses because i don't see so well that will just pull off like that and that will allow us to lay the speedo down in the fixture now uh we'll just take these off there are various schools of thought with this and we use a large jubilee clip to retain the ring shape now if i just start getting a screwdriver and wildly flicking that out this is stainless it's going to buckle the outside of it and we want to keep that still so if you have an aluminium one on your bike or whatever gauge you're doing it won't matter so much i would still be inclined to put it on but it'll i mean it's a lot softer obviously now, the more you bend metal, the harder it gets, which is why they anneal it. They sort of heat it up. So I'm going to put this on. This is a bastard to put on. It's really, really quite difficult in that this isn't a great Jubilee clip. And not just that, it tends to, um, it tends to, what's the word for it? Um, it'll dent the stainless. Now, we're just going to put it on like that and we'll tighten it up. I forgot the other tool I used. <laughs> I'll go and get a socket to tighten that just a moment. Now I'm going to pop that down toward the bottom and tighten this up. Now, I've got the worm. Oh, see, it's going to slip off. I've got the worm. You have to put it almost centrally. I've got the worm facing down the bottom of the gauge, so if that part there does dent the side of the bezel, it's not going to be such a big deal because we won't see it. But this is this is horrendous. This bit. This is part, that's the hardest part of the whole job, is doing this bit. It's just not fun. Right, now I've got it in. Now there's a couple of things I want to talk about with this. It's said on forums and so forth that a paint can opener is the best thing for undoing this. It will, if you look there, stretch the metal on the corners. Now obviously you would want to reshape this. I started trying to use a modified screwdriver with a rounded heel on it so I could work it around like this, twisting it off. That's not a good idea anyway. The best way I've found so far is just a regular screwdriver. And if you can see there, I'm starting to lift it up just a little bit at a time. Well, that's probably too much there. I'm just trying to make it visible for you. And so I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna work this up. Now, this is time consuming and you wanna take your time with it because otherwise the thing's gonna look terrible. We're just doing a little bit. So we're stretching it up so it's 
to the point where it's vertical because you need it vertical right up here like that in order to get the thing out. You get to the point where you're going to need this flush so you can really bend the thing up. So that's the beauty of having a fixture that you can hold it in. I'm going to zap it up here right, and turn it around so that I've got more freedom to get that lip up and more vertically. You really need to take your time with this, there's no hurry. The faster you go, the worse it's going to look when you're finished. So you can also use that heel there on the paint can thing to run around to stretch it against the Jubilee clip so it's rounded. Because this has to be the point, because particularly when you paint it, you're putting the gasket, there's a gasket behind there, you need it to be opened right up so you can get it in. It's horrendously frustrating if you can't get it in. Right, let's ditch this guy like that and you can see I haven't done such a good job you can see it's dented down the bottom from the Jubilee clip but we expected that as long as it's straight around here I can't say I care too much so there's a couple of things take note there's an index there there's a little notch out of the back shell here which is where the gasket's got a protrusion that sits in there's also a corresponding one on the inner housing now she's coming apart, so we'll pop that out. That bloke goes there. Now this housing is quite interesting because it's got this gasket on it. So there's two gaskets actually. There's this one here which we're going to need to pull out, which is damaged, and it's all hard. So we might have to try and do some repair to that. Right. So the ring, there's a gasket here. And the gasket goes around the inner housing, so if we pull that off, there's the inner housing with the lens and everything in it. Now that gasket has a key on it, and I've lost sight of it for now, but there is a cutout somewhere on the lower edge. Whatever the case, we can keep that together with the gasket in tow, and the other one, the gasket came off. Anyway, there's the housing, so I think the first thing we need to do... That grommet there is glued in, and that's the reason that it's split there. We're going to rub it back. The paint is stable, so we can paint over it. Now, the other one I threw in a bucket of thinners, and this didn't move it, so I don't know what sort of paint that is, but it's very good. Uh, let's have a look at this. The instrument thing. Right, spoons. We need to take the needle off. Now, there's a couple of things with these. Some of them have a stop on the zero k's an hour or miles an hour, which the speedo rests against. I'm not sure how to calibrate those. I'd have thought if you lifted it up and over and saw where it landed, it might be the way to go. That being said, I've no idea. These don't have a stop, so we can just use a couple of spoons and gently lever the speedo needle off like that. Did I bend it? Uh, that's what I did. And the axle little spindle still there, so that's cool. Uh, in the meantime, while we do that, we can just sort of put in a bit of cardboard, place her here, and give her toenails a bit of a paint to make her feel pretty again. This is really, really easy to get. You get this stuff from motor, uh, what do you call it? Car restoration joints, and we can just paint that again. I didn't prepare the surface or any of that sort of stuff. It's not going to come off. This is my brother's. It's done his Mustang. It's done my 57 Plymouth. I think it did some other car I was mucking around with. I can't remember. Anyway, they can just sit and dry. Just out of mind's way or out of harm's way. And we can get into this now. The overlay we're using is typically just a sticker. Uh, we have to be careful how we apply this. Now, this is from a great place. Classic gauges in the United Kingdom and putting the tack one on it was a flawless fit it was really really good so they're marked the same way but every year uh, Honda which is the case with this gauge here actually changed some of the configurations on the gauge some of them had an elongated sort of area here on this digit here on both of these some of them are a different distance between here and here you have to measure your gauges and make sure you get it right now they're only held in by two Phillips heads. They might be Japanese industrial standard. Don't know, but Phillips heads move them off, which is cool. 
we'll stick them in the inner housing where the lens is to keep them safe. And it comes off. It's a fiberglass backed one. What we need to do with this is we need to get rid of all that crazing. Now these are kind of backlit. Now if you put another overlay over the top of them, all that muck is going to show up. So I want to get rid of all of it. So we're left with the bare fiberglass and we do that. I start with some 400, finish off with 2000. Now, just before we get to that, I want to have a closer look at this guy here. And we need to check that it works. So I'm going to drop him in there and I'm going to take it out. No one's messed with this because that green paint chipped and went everywhere. I'm just going to hold that up because otherwise it's going to crash down onto the bench and that would be bad. Right, let's take you out. If we can figure out how the bloody hell to do it. Just paint. Just paint, guys. It's just paint. Now, this all seems to work well. If I get a little screw stick and put it up the bum, that actually works. We can see the rotational magnet and the needle housing this part here. Now, these are good. This is a little bit more complicated than the tack one that I took apart before because you've got your odometer and trip meter on there, and I don't want to mess with that stuff. Now, here's the deal. There's end play here. That's about the same as the other one at around about 30 thousandths. But what the worry is, is the side move, the side play in the main shaft. That's a permanent magnet there. I'm told by Harvey, the Japanese ones are great. They maintain, they maintain the magnetic field, so it's all good. Now, to take this off, it's fairly easy. We just take this screw off here and that one there, and that whole up assembly is going to come off. I think <laughs> anyway, let's just take it off and see what happens, eh? Actually, why don't we take this part off first? I've never been in one of these this deep, if that makes any sense. So we'll take this up. It's a little shield that sits over it. Now, let's have a look at this. The needle. Where's the easiest way to see it? You can't really see it. The speedo needle here that attaches to that axle or the spindle there is sitting joined to this area here. I can't remember what Harvey said that was called. That seems to move quite well. If you take that out, that carrier comes out, the needle's going to drop. And there's a spring there and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it mounted to the side and take it off from there so I can ret retrieve the bottom part. So let's do that now and see what the friggin' hell happens, eh? Can you see? I hope you can see. I don't normally shoot videos on a workbench. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to mess with it and lubricate it because it hasn't been lubricated since 1972. And I don't think anyone's been in here before. I think it's original. Now, great, awesome. So, our little worm stayed there. That's the worm for the odometer. No, it's not. It's the worm for the trip meter, but the odometer gets its drive from there as well. That bracket I was talking about before here is holding that in. There's a little pintle on the bottom of that, on the bottom of this bit here, and it's holding it into there. Now, we can take that out and put a, just a spot of oil in there, I guess, but this is safe to sort of sit on its bottom like that and nothing's going to fall out. So I'm just going to pop it over to the side for now, and I want to have a look at this. There's a worm. Don't know how it's held in, but it is. There's a bush, and that side movement there is really good. That's better than the tack. There's a little bush there. Now, that's not as free spinning as I would have hoped. There's a worm gear in there, which drives this, which turns everything around. That could be what the drag is. But I want to put a spot of oil into the bush. That might pop out. I don't know. But I need to lubricate in there, so we'll have a go at that. So I've just shot brake clean into this area here just to see if I can re release this. Not possible because I think that only releases once this comes out. I don't want to. I don't want to take that out. So I've got to get in here. It's virtually impossible to see right in under there. 
and soak it with oil. I'll just put a couple of drops in while this is rotating. So we'll see if we can figure out how to do that. So this can take a while. I want to get in under there with a lubricant. Much easier on the tack than with this one. So I'm going to turn this off and just put a bit of um, lubricant there. And what we want to do, I've got it connected to a drill. And so by rotating it, I've got some hope of that lubricant going down into the bush. Right, well while that lubricant's all soaking into the bush, there's a couple of things to talk about here. One is the face, how we're going to tackle that, and the other is the casing. Right, so I've ended up taking off all the paint um, from this, and the grommet as well. The grommet is kind of knackered. Might have to try and make something else, really hard, stiff, all that sort of stuff. And that's the reason why the face is so crazed, it's just pure UV damage. Now there's scratch damage. Anyway, so we can use a couple of things. You can use a rattle can for this sort of thing. Um, this is satin black. It'll give you a lovely finish. Um, now, this says on it, I'm just going to pop my glasses off again and put my stronger ones on. Uh, no primer required on wood, metal and plastic. Now, this is typical um, home hobby paint. I wouldn't use it. I really wouldn't use it. Self-priming is a bit of an oxymoron with these because um, it's not self-priming at all. It's just basic enamel which sticks to anything. I think on a um, video I did on the MG's engine or something, I can't remember which thing I was painting, I actually painted dog feces with enamel and it stuck there beautifully. So enamel will stick to anything. The problem with it is um, you have to read through all the fine print to make sure it's for exterior use because if it's just interior after a good summer out there, it's all going to sort of crack and peel off. So this looks good. It's a good short term thing, but I like to use a proper system for painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some prep wash, which is this stuff here. Always mention Milsom's Auto Paints in Pantry Gully. And if you take your old cans in, this is a very old one, it's something like $4 for a litre. And I'm going to wash this off. It's a clean bit of rag. It doesn't look it, but it actually is. Um, I've did I mention? I've taken all the paint off because there were pop marks through it with a little bit of surface rust starting to show up. Now once you've touched, once you've washed this off, you don't want to be touching it. Oh, it sounds like a nice car. So let's go around there and we're good. Right, now. Put that to the side, get our can opener and open this. This is just black single stage etch. Not as good as two back, but we're at home. And the last thing I want to do is start poisoning. It's probably a bit thick, but I'm going to use it anyway. We don't want to start poisoning everyone's relatives and cats and dogs and all that sort of stuff. For this job, I'm using a small touch up gun and I'm just going to open him up, pop a bit in there. That might be a bit thick. I reckon I'll get away with it though. Normally, you reduce it or thin it a tiny bit more than that. Pop that there. And we'll go out and we'll shoot that thing with a bit of paint. Now, other thing to mention, I made this stick, and the idea of that is to do this as I paint it. It's going to make things a bit easier. Tell you what, if I have a time again, I probably would have stuck that in a lathe and turned the grain into it and left it naked. Anyway, hey, too much pressure. And then we'll hit it with some primer. Right, now for the next thing. This little bloke here. It looks awful, it's all faded and it's crazed as well. The crazing isn't in the substrate, that's just fiberglass. But it is uh, in all the remnants of the decal there. So I want to get rid of all of that. And to do it, I'm going to use 400 again. So when you do this, you're going to get all sorts of green alien looking crap all over your fingers. Because as it comes off, um, it leaves a mess. But it's the white base that's stable and the green sort of stuff that hasn't been stable. So I'm just going to take all this off and I'll be back. Sanding block was stupid. I forgot that I used this on the last one. Just a piece of wood to keep it nice and straight. And we're just giving it a rub on a bit of 2000. 
to really clean it up. A lovely flat surface for the um, for the overlay to sit on. Right, so we give it another dose of Prepsol, Prep Wash, to make sure it's absolutely clean. That's a clean off coat of rag. It's not mine. I'm not a size eight. I'll put it this way so you can see. Now, a couple of things when you're making jigs like this. This one has a tiny bit of side movement in it. So you've got to be careful still. I didn't have the right size nails. They're out of just a um, cheap picture frame kit. And basically all you do is get your dial or whatever and you stick it against here. A couple of pen marks where those are. Do it on a drill press so you get them parallel. Um, having said that, I don't think I did. I think I did it freehand. There's the overlay. And so it's going to go like that. Uh, now, there's a split in the center of it, just there, and it's tempting to go, do that to try and um, release it, but what we're going to do is going to use a razor blade. These are vinyl, by the way. They're really, really good. Did I mention they were 20 pounds? So I've got that one, and a scalpel or something they say in the instructions, but it's been a while since I performed surgery on anything, and the last time I did perform it, it was on a car. Right, so we need to take these off with my diabolically dirty hands. And we need to stick it on. And that's it there. Just makes it so much easier when you use a jig. So that looks absolutely dandy. Do you like it? I like it. I actually really like that. There's another choice I meant to mention before, not just with the ones with the elongated digit here, but there's ones you can get in kilometres an hour, and we're in Australia, obviously, and kilometres an hour is what we read, but I just don't think a 1972 bike looks right with kilometres an hour. We didn't have metric then. Nothing was base 10 in 1972, except money. A windmill. And a sheep. Right, well, I've just primed this. Um, you can see it dries very, very quickly, the acrylic. Now, one thing I did mean to mention, or mean to mention, I should say, is when you build these, just make sure I can't touch the table there. Your legs are sort of long enough to avoid uh, doing anything like that. So that's cool. So we'll pull that apart, or put that to the side to cure off properly. Now, this I've got a problem with because it is super duper sluggish in its movement. Um, the other thing is, I've got to put this back together the trip meter and I've taken the odometer out to clean in there as well but the problem is I lost my place so I've had to put it back as nearer to the other mileage as I could so I've just got to continue with this but that's that's not good so I'm going to fiddle around with that um, and get it right but it, it's, it needed to be sort of cleaned up it's a lot dirtier inside than the other one was so I've been messing about with this, I got this a bit better, it was very very sluggish to return. I'm using this lubricator from the 50s. Now my father bought this before I was born. Um, I'd say we'd got it in England and I can get right in. And so I can get in and lubricate, whoops, all this stuff. Which way does the spinner go? No, I've got this the wrong way. It goes there. It runs that way, because that's the trip meter on this side. So it's just a matter of going around cleaning up. Um, I've still got to put this together. I can't remember how this goes. That's the trip meter there. I'll put this bottom thing on. Hang on. What I will do. This is the little bridge. So I can get right in there with a few plunges of oil. And then that can go back on here. And then that'll hold that whole mechanism in. If indeed, <clears throat> pardon me, I can remember how to get it in. It goes this way. And then that pin tool rests in there like that. And then I can pop a screw back in. And that's that side of the mess fixed up. Uh,
and we'll know straight away when this is in because that's that little thing that rests there. That's better. It was really sluggish before. Right, so now I've got to put this on. And this goes. This is a little keeper that sort of goes in there and over to keep that in. All right, now that goes on top, I think. Right, so, no, that's it there. Got that the wrong way. All right, that's the wrong way. I'm going to have to pull this off. And then that, I have to lift up and go that way. Cool. That is better. Right, that's all working. So I'm tempted not to touch that anymore. I think I'll just go and get that bottom bit and put it on. I've just got to continue to just put a little bit more grease or clean clean some of these a little bit more and I think I'm on the home straight. Radio. So where's the movement? Alright, I reckon which way does this go? Goes like that. So we'll bang that in. We've broken the paint seal. Well, we all know that but it's, now that it's been repaired. So I've got a little bit of oil on my fingers, so I'm just going to go and wash my hands to um, before I put the face on. But that'll go like that. Got to go wash my hands. I'll turn around so you can see it. That would be more polite. I've got a um, light above me. But I think it's casting a shadow with the camera itself. I'm not sure. Because I looked at some of the footage of it yesterday and it's just not as bright as I'd like, so I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, now I'm just going to turn around my way for a minute. And we did this yesterday, remember? And it needs to go over the spindle. Sort of like that. But, not like that. That's near enough. I think we'll road test it now. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to make sure it clears those screws. And our trip mate is working. The um, odometer is working. So that seems alright. There are a few blemishes on this lens. The other one was sort of similar, but this will keep dust off until I'm ready to put it together. I'm happy with that though, I think it looks good. It's damn sight better than it was before anyway. What we're doing is getting a tire tube to fix our speedo. We're going to pay for this now. Yeah. <laughs> Came out the bottom of the box. <laughs> Come on. Dad, you stupid. Knock it off now, you can turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pop this to one side. We've got the, uh, can we see over here? Anyway, look, we've got the shells that go on the back of them. They're not in bad nick. Um, certainly a little bit of fine steel wool will fix those up. One of them is covered in overspray there, which is easy. Again, we can take it off. There are grommets that are knackered that go through here for the lighting and the lighting looms of these guys. I've got to get two new or four new bulbs, sorry, for them because what's the point in doing this if we're going to use the old clothes? Um, <clears throat> the other thing is the grommet that goes in for the trip meter is buggered. And even if I glue this together, it's just not going to seal. So I'm just going to use a regular grommet and pop a hole through with a wad punch. Uh, so they're stuffed, they're gone. The ones that actually hold the speed, I'll try and move this stuff back for a minute. The ones that actually hold the instruments in, which are these four here, are fine. There's nothing wrong with those. And the dome nuts, the chrome dome nuts. Um, I've got some new ones. If I don't have four the same, I'll just run them over a fine wire wheel and make them look good. Um, the other thing is this. Uh, that's the gasket that goes into here to hold the instrument and protect it and all that sort of stuff, and it's knackered. You can get these... Um, I think they're about $35 or $40 or so for a pair, 
That's XUS. Now, by the time you convert that to Aussie dollars and then get it shipped over here, the shipping's obviously will be quite often the same. Then put GST on, that's going to be 100 bucks. And so that's the reason why I went into the shop and just bought a generic uh, bicycle tie tube. I'm going to make my own out of these. And you know what? If I don't like them, I will buy the original ones, but I'll wait until a local supplier has them before I commit, if you know what I mean, because I just don't want to spend that much on something I'm never going to see. So this is just a 20 inch. Uh, I got the biggest one because I could. And if I pull it apart, I might have to just start putting this stuff away, pushing it to the side. And I'm obviously going to have to use a, um, what do you call it? What's the thing called? A blade, a sharp blade. And, but I reckon by the time we go around, I'll just cut it thinner and go around in here. I reckon that's going to be just as good. It's going to work just as well. Didn't do a good job with this, it's sort of shinier than I wanted. It is a satin paint, but I put it on too thick. But we've got to talk about this thing here, the grommet. Now the old one is going to be unusable. Now we can put it in and glue it together and everything, but it's not going to seal. Um, so we're going to have to go for this, which is a crappy alternative. But in order to make that work, we're going to have to punch a hole. We want the hole to be small so that the um, it hangs onto the shaft. I'm going to try and get a central like that with a wad punch and just pop a little hole in there um, and stick it in the case. Like this, and it's a tight fit, which is what we want. I don't want to scratch the bloody case. I only painted this this morning. Now, if that was um, enamel, that would still be soft. This is acrylic and it's quite hard now. And this is the reason why I've put flocking in the side, inside this. If we take that out, we can put that bit together. Now, it's pretty easy on the speedo. There's a hole there. There's a hole there for the trip meter, right? So it's a bit of a no-brainer. On the tack, this can go anywhere. And there's a little cut out there that matches up with the gasket this thing. Now, before we put that on, I'm going to get some rubber grease and I'm going to do two things with it. A really, really slight smear on here so it doesn't boil against that rubber when I put it in. And not just that, I want this lubricated so that when I put the ring on, it doesn't hang on to the seal, you see. Because that ring is going to be a pain in the neck if it hangs onto the seal. So just a little bit, we're not drowning the thing, we're just making it so it's just a minute bit slippery. This ring, it is going to be a pain. Now unless, that's actually gone in, I wasn't expecting that to go in. It's still hanging on a little bit though, you can see it grabbed the seal there. We've just got to feed that back around. We need to make absolutely sure that that thing's opened up because if it's not, it's going to be murder to get it. And a pain in the neck. Now these are our multis that have been ground off. And I've got a bit of felt around there and I'm just going to go around and work this ring anywhere where I see that it's not quite um, right, if you know what I mean. It was not opened up quite enough. Right, so let's try this sucker out. Ew, it makes me nervous. There we go, and we want it to go over that lip, which it does. That's cool. Right, so we can take him out, and that's going to go in there against that flop lining. This one's going to go in here. Crap, I'm dirty again. Um, like that. And it's got to go in uh, underneath that, underneath this lip. This is a pain. I'm going to be washing my hands again. And it'll slide around. Right. Now, let's have a look. The hole for the tack. Okay, so we've got this hole here that goes through there, down there. And there's the gasket protrusion there. 
I'm just not a hundred percent with this bit here. I'm just gonna muck around with that a bit. Get that seal right there, it flicked in there. That's why it lubricated. See that? It just went all the way in. So it's all the way in right around. It's in the right spot. This is the tricky bit. Just let me double check that. Yep, I think we're good. Right. So it's hard against the case here on this side. And we've got plenty of lip showing around the circumference there. That's cool. So this is the tricky bit. We've got to get it through that bloody hole and then get it back and in there. Alright, so let's just go back in here again. And we're in there, but not quite there. I nearly got it. I got it there, got it. I think it's in. No, it's not quite. There we go. Alright, so if I pop this out again, we're dirty, but we're in. So I've got a good amount of, I don't know what the angle of the camera is for you to see, but there's a couple of mil all the way around, which is cool. That'll hang on. It's less than ideal, but it's better than nothing. Now, this is the thing where I was absolutely crapping my pants yesterday. And the reason I was doing it was because um, I was worried I was going to belt the needle off. I've got a wooden drift here. And I was using it. And I was worried about the speedo needle coming off because if that comes off when we're doing this, we're screwed. You only can reuse these once as far as I'm aware. But maybe if we just push it, the thing is if you squeeze that, it could go this way or that way. It's most likely to fold out that way. So we've got to get it over that threshold so that when we squeeze it, it actually clamps down. So not very good for a speedometer, but beggars cannot be choosers and I haven't really got the leverage to just push it in yes I have so now we can just push it in so I'm just going to go around here and push all this in by hand and I'll turn the camera back on now it's just a matter of squeezing it in with these bit by bit no hurry and if you're slow and methodical about it, it'll look right from the back, even though it's going to be concealed by the ring we're about to make. So I'm going to continue. And by running a bit of fabric tape over the end of these multis, we can skate it over the paint. It's not a problem. Um, so what we've got now is a speedo that doesn't look too bad. There we go and the back of it, the ring, sorry, the ring looks all right. We've got those two dents that we had from the Jubilee clip, those ones, which are underneath there to the side, but what do you do? The rest of it looks fine. Not perfect, but not that bad. So that's cool. The um, other, th oh, hang on, we've got to put that knob in, don't we? This guy, right, how does that go? Um, it's got a square shank on it, hang on, there, it goes like that, that has a bend in it and I didn't straighten it because I didn't want to damage it, I think I said something about that at the start anyway, and there we go, I think that's much better, so that won't fit that way anymore because I didn't cut that out big enough but it will fit that way. Right, now what we've got to do is we've got to talk about this little bloke here. Where is it? This one here. Uh, so we'll move our little speedio off to the side for now. So what we've got is got a bit of rubber. Bicycle tie tube. And I'm going to get prep wash and I'm going to wash all that white powdery crap out of there. Just a bit of prep wash. I live and breathe this stuff. It's cheap and it works. But come back here. And I'm just going to go inside that and wipe all that crap out of there, that powder. Because I'm going to put glue in there. I've got tape here on that edge because I don't want glue going all over the inside of the speedo belt. The mounting shield. This is pretty gross, this stuff, but it still seems to work. 
So we're going to stick some across there. Um, right, and we want to go on the inside of this. What I'm going to do is just stick it about to where the edge of the tape is. Let me just double check that. Yes, that should be right. So I'm going inside. Bloody hell, it's got a gather in it. It's a bit of a pain in the neck to do this. And really, look, if I had the foresight, I probably would have just ordered new ones, but I do have to watch my budget. Let us go in there and then cut it to the right size. It should probably have a little bit of overlap. Actually, I might just leave that. Yes, I think I will. I cut the other one, it was a tiny bit too short. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here. Now, it's going to stay there, but what's going to happen is it's going to fold in like that when I go to put the Speedo in. So, again, we're opening this step up. I want to stick this to itself, if you know what I mean. And that way I can fold it where I want it and it will stay where I want it. Right, and then I'm going to fold it where I want it. So I want it to stick out a little bit because it's going to compress. Uh, kind of there. Right, so the next thing we've done, that's a bit average actually. The next thing we've done is we've got the lights, we'll put two new globes in, we've got We've wrapped that in the fabric wire because that's what I like. And I think this goes in there for night time. And in there. The um, other thing, that's all right, is the grommet. I haven't got a better grommet, so we're just going to have to stay with this naked one. And you know what? I can change it out later. I'm not even fussed about that. That looks bloody awful. I might have to redo this. We'll just see how it goes. Oh boy. The things we do for motorbikes and cars, hey? Oh, what I might do is I might just put a bit of slip around here just so it slides over that bell and doesn't gather or carry on. Just around, wait, come back. Just around inside there, like that. It might make it grip a bit easier. It goes kind of like that. It's quite tight in there, believe it or not. And we'll just go in there. And we'll put him over. Now this should go in without too much hassle. But I don't what is going on. Here we go. That looks crap. It's underneath though. But that's sort of what we're aiming for. Uh, for the purpose of demo though, what the hell, we'll just bang the thing together. And then we can finish it later on. I looked at the hole, I thought, why is there a hole there? And then I realised I'd left the bolt out. Oh yeah, how's it look? Dirty. But not too bad. That's how I wanted it to look. You can see a bit of, uh, what do you call it, contact with these crap in there. Maybe some white spirit or something. It's also gathered there. I didn't do that well. You could probably overlap it actually. It might look a bit better. I might try and tuck that in, but I reckon we can chuck it on the bike now. As fitting this stuff concerned, I've just got a pack of 8mm dome nuts. They're not Honda ones at all, but it doesn't matter. These are only held in with one nut. Like that. So we can just stick a lock nut on. Hang on, I don't want to drop, want to drop anything. Stick a lock nut in and a dome nut. It didn't have a dome nut on it, but I'll put one there because I think it looks good. And you'll see, by looking at this, I did a much better job on the speeder than the tack. That was the first one. I'm going to take that off and do it again. I'm not happy with it. Whereas this, I'm actually quite happy with that. Uh, now, what I need, do need to do to tighten it is I need to get on the thing, straighten up because it's sort of sitting on a funny angle, and just tighten it up, and I'll show you when we're finished. Now, the only um, disadvantage with doing the 350 instruments, if we look at the 750s ones, they're faded. And they've got, like, oily, darker, sort of unfaded stains, if you like, around where the securing screws for the dials are. This one's also knocked out around here, so it needs a bit of bodywork. I spoke to the guy who provided the 350 overlays, and he asked if I sent these in. He can make them for me, no problem. But I'm a little bit loath to send them to the UK on the off chance I don't get them back, because with that dies, we're screwed. But let's have a look at the 350 ones mounted. Probably the wrong light to see the illumination. But that's how they look. And don't they look absolutely lovely? So, well happy with that. 
Right, standout tools. Uh, this thing proved to be most useful, just some sort of thing to hold a speedo or tack while you're working on it, both upside down and right way up. Um, you don't have to make one out of jarrah with linseed oil like this, that was me being stupid, but I had some time after work and I knocked it up quickly in about five minutes on a bandsaw, which is the reason we've got that slot there. We didn't use a hole saw because we didn't have one big enough for that. Um, the reason I went for hardwood, of course, is you can really reef against it when you're putting the trims back on and all that sort of stuff, and it went dent like pine. Uh, that was brilliant. What even made it more practical is the fact it's got that flocking sort of on the inside, which is this stuff. This is auto electrical tape, uh, fabric tape. Oh, I can't remember what I paid for it. I think $8 a roll. Rolls are huge. It's sort of out here somewhere. It's massive. This stuff's brilliant, and we even used it on Dave's uh, frame on his motorcycle where the plastic sort of seat frame rubbed against the powder coating to protect it. So we sort of ran it on there. You can use this stuff for anything. It's great. That for painting was really easy. I just spun it around and just licked over it with paint. Um, this is a little lubricator from my father from the 1950s. Um, after a little while, what it does is it pressurizes that chamber. I've emptied it again. And then it does come out a lot more pro prolifically than it did before. But that was brilliant for getting into the tight spots. These uh, $1 multi-grips, brilliant. File the teeth off, for goodness sake. A bit of that fabric tape around there and you'll never get a dent. That's really, really good. And of course, making up a jig to put your face on was a great thing as well as a little bit of dowel. And you can see I've pretty much buggered that. So I can throw it out now. But it did do its job in sort of keeling over that ring. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please feel free to leave comments and likes and all that sort of stuff if you want if you didn't like it please leave a dislike but whatever the case hope you've enjoyed this take good care of yourselves and i'll see you around